This is the Brave Ideas Podcast, brought to you by Akua. Welcome to episode 26 of the Brave Ideas Podcast, the show that is all about bringing to light fresh perspectives from the worlds of digital and marketing. I'm Dan Herman. I'm a digital strategist. I'm an avowed Batman v Superman hater. And today, I'm here with my co-host. I'm Esther McGear. I'm head of conversation analytics at Aqua and the official brand advocate of the Republic of South Africa since 1986. Today, we're thrilled to have Debbie Skoltz with us, the executive assistant to the chairman of the Aqua Group, as well as the executive head of client service. Debbie is a rebel <laughs> who loves <laughs> yoga and Pilates by the sea and adores her Minecraft streaming watching son. <laughs> and today, she's going to talk to us about leadership. Debbie, what's new? Hi, Dan and Esther. I'm here to discuss the perception of leaders being unreachable and how to tap into making sure and finding out that they're actually human and you can talk to them. And we're very excited to talk about it because I think it's a really important topic yes. that will help a lot of people to work out how they can navigate their ways in their careers. So I'd be quite interested to understand and just unpack a bit further around how do you feel leaders are perceived by people in an organization? I think they are up there in that white castle, glass tower, whatever you want to call it. People feel they can't reach them, but they actually can. So a way would be, one way would be to just come and talk to me or to the gatekeeper or the PA if you have a good relationship with them, which you should have because they should be approachable people. And you can get the mood or the vibe that's going on with the leader on that day and actually know that they're just human beings and they love talking to people that aren't all business, all business, all the time. Why do you think it would be really important for the leader of an organization to invite people in or to want to speak to people in? Because that's his heartbeat. That's the, the heartbeat of the business, the people. So if you want to talk to the people, you've got to talk to the people. Sure. Yeah. You know, and, and make them feel like you're approachable, which is hard as well for a leader, but you know, there are ways. But we know it's not always practical, no, right? No, it's not so, always practical. So advertising specifically, as an example, is a very high-pressure mm -hmm. industry. There are dependencies upwards of clients who have huge money invested mm -hmm. in a business. There are dependencies downwards towards people who need to have jobs and need to sustain that. And, you know, that can result in a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on a leader. It's not unrealistic to think that sometimes it's very difficult to talk to a leader yeah. and you've got to choose your moment. That's it. You know, so can we talk about how, what is the best moment to talk to someone? Okay, so choosing your moment is quite easy because it's pretty standard here. Like, unless there's a pitch or something going on Friday afternoon or when Brent's in the office anytime after 3, 4. Um, I just want to just wanna point out that there was a mimicking of, a, of drinking. Um, I don't know what that relates to. <laughs> when the drinking starts. When, yeah, at the end of the day. And most days, I'd say. And, especially, and Fridays. Yeah. So timing is really yeah. important, but it, it's not simply about the time of day, right? No. It's also about the mood. Yeah, the time and of day, the mood. And I think that what you've developed a particular skill at is reading mood. Yes. So how do you read mood of leaders? Body language, energy that's coming off them, it's easy. Uh, just a walk, a look, a step. And not being greeted is a mood. Like if I say good morning to somebody and they're like, I'll go, okay, try again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, fine, thanks and you. But if somebody's frazzled, obviously if the leader's looking frazzled and walking fast and the heart rate is up, not a time to approach them and say, oh, I'd like a promotion. But how should yeah. I read that? Yeah. Because if I'm hypothetically walking past the leader and I greet them and they don't greet me back, what am I meant to think? You can't take it personally. You've got to, you're meant to think his mind is on a lot of things. His or her mind is on a lot of things and there's a lot going on here. And sometimes people shut off to like keep their focus. And it's not about you. It's not that they're being rude and they don't want to greet you. What are some of those a lot of things that a leader could be going through? A pitch, personal life, growth in the agency, things happening fast, other businesses, other aspects of the other businesses. Yeah, day-to-day -day stuff, so much going on. A lot of yeah. emails, a lot of things he's got to address that I can't yeah. do. You know, a lot of stuff you've got to do, you can't expect the PA or whatever, the assistant to do everything. A lot, a lot of decisions. A lot of decisions, yeah, a lot of decisions. Yeah. A lot of people needing a chunk of him for decisions, for meetings, a lot. I mean, I just think about yeah. it, I get a bit exhausted. So no, exactly. They're physically like, doing that. We're just thinking and talking. Exactly. Like, like you, you experience it in your career. Yeah. You know, we're fortunate to work in a large organization. So we have 
strategists who do strategy, we have creatives who do creatives, we have client service people that do client service, we have analysts who do analytics. And as you climb up an organization, you have to become able to consider all of those different aspects. So Excellent. as a, a CEO or an executive yeah. head of a department, you have to understand and you are responsible mm. for the sum total of strategy, creative, insights, and clients. media, and client service, clients. exactly. Yeah. So I totally understand. Like It can be completely overwhelming. Yeah. And just want to throw it back to you, Deb, because you've been in this game for a while. You've experienced and worked with leaders who have been overwhelmed. What do you do when one of your leaders feels overwhelmed? I just remain calm and tap into the human side. You know, they're human. They need a cup of tea, coffee, a glass of milk and a cookie, a whiskey. <laughs> you know, whatever I've said before, is any, can I get anything for you? Let me know. I'll yeah. go and get it. Lunch. So, so really, refreshment. Yeah, <laughs> feed them, feed them, and water them. But does, it, but does it? Can I ask you? But does it take a PA to be nice to a leader? Yeah, it does. Because you know what? You get some PAs. You really do. Who are like they think they're the leader. Like actually, I'm running the show here. I'm better than you. I'm the top dog. I'm employed by the chairman, so I'm quite important and I'm unreachable. You've got to be, you've got to be nice. You've got to be kind. You've got to be. Work from the heart. I, I then I totally agree with you. It's really important that if you're a gatekeeper, you're accessible, right? Yeah. You're approachable because yeah. you are the gatekeeper, and you're responsible in a lot of ways for putting out the positive face of the leader. But what I was really trying to get to was this idea around what can people do to be nice to their leader? Like, what can other people do? What can I do? What can Esther do? Is it specifically the domain of the personal assistant to nurture leaders, or is that something that could be extended to others in a non-creepy way? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. Yeah, I guess you could, yeah. With boundaries, in other words. <laughs> With boundaries, yeah, you've got to get your filter in place. Um, how? I mean, I think that we've spoken a lot about sensitivity, yeah, right? Yeah, sensitivity. And, yeah. Like, and people being sensitive to the fact that they are, that leaders are in fact humans, being empathetic. Mm. So I think that's one thing. Mm. Probably it's a ridiculous question to ask, but I mean, uh, maybe it's also about understanding that your first instinct shouldn't be to be disdainful of your leader. No. The first instinct should be to be sensitive and sympathetic to where they're coming from. Yes, I agree. Sensitivity, empathy, compassion, all of those go a long way. So even if he feels like an ice-cold steel person, those things are icebreakers. Everybody somehow, if they haven't got it in them to have a bit of, uh, let you give them compassion, sensitivity, or empathy, then they don't have a heart. Yeah. I mean, we all have a heart. So, like what? Just yeah, you've got, and brave. You've got to be quite yeah. brave. Like, yeah. I mean, our leaders are quite approachable, but I'm yeah. thinking in like organisations I've worked for, they really are up on a pedestal there, and you can't approach them. Yeah. And I'd be scared to. So you've just got to be yourself. I think yeah. be yourself and be. Be human be towards human. a human. Be human to your human. But yeah. also, like, it's really simple, actually. In my experience, like, because I also had that insecurity, right? Mm. I was also quite insecure mm. about talking to an MD or a CEO yeah. of a business and engaging with them as a human being because, you know, you imagine that these people are really, as you say, on mm. a pedestal mm. and are way too busy or way mm. too important to engage with you. And I started to do something small. I just started to okay. greet them. Yeah. I can make an effort yeah. to greet to greet them, or make an effort to smile at them. You smile, or smile, just say, go or say, "How are you?" You know, and like it makes such a massive difference because you recognize yeah. in yourself that these are people yes. that you can talk to, like other people. Mm. But also, it breaks eyes, and it also positions you in the eyes of your leader as someone who's Stands willing out, to yeah. be nice. And also, they kind of put their guard up a bit because they know that they're perceived at this person at a distance. But as soon as you just Still have respect, obviously, but treat them just like you would your fellow colleagues, you know, in greeting and just respect and empathy and then they'll remember you maybe or it'll just not be so awkward. Absolutely. Because that actually distances like a leader anyway, just thinking, oh, like I'm this person, so, you know, not everybody's going to talk to me. So that you need to break the ice all the time. Smile. A smile and a greeting. Can't go <laughs> wrong. And a cup of tea. <laughs> That's so true, just breaking that awkward feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're a human being and you know that you're perceived in a certain way, yeah. so it's already awkward for you from yeah. the start. Yeah. Just to have that natural interaction yeah. is so actually such a relief. Yeah. But I know, Esther, you never feel awkward, hey? No. You're just like gung-ho, no. guns blazing, hey? I never, ever feel awkward, but I very much respect <laughs> <laughs> um, Debbie as the gatekeeper, <laughs> which has actually, in my experience, been great in this organization with having someone like Debbie who just understands the leader and Thank also you. the heart of it so well. It's just you can always rely on Debbie to give you the exact feedback about how to handle the situation. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know what I mean? 
me. So, for instance, just the word of, you know, today is a pitch day, it's yeah. quite intense, which is like not racing. Now. Yeah. Like, can I go into the yeah. door? Yeah. No, 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 I wouldn't. Or to remind us that, you know what, Brent has actually said that he'd really like you to come into his office. So, yes, Esther, let's schedule that, yeah. that yeah. meeting today, yeah. you know. And can I ask you something? What happens when someone doesn't check with you? No, then it's generally okay because I'm okay. not there to watch every move. Yes. I mean, I'm there for important meetings and if somebody can't get him. But there are times when he's not always in his office as well or Shaley's not in her office. Uh, you know, they're not going to bite your head off. Yeah. But I think sometimes they also don't say no, now's not a good time. Yeah. They often don't say no. People find it hard to say no, even yeah. in leadership positions. So I would just be saying, you know what, maybe not right now. Just to like, like I know he's closed his door, he hasn't got the do not disturb sign on, but I know from talking to him earlier, maybe not a good day. And it also depends what you want to talk about, but yeah, come back and... I also think that's a really interesting point, sorry, just to pick up okay. on it, is that they don't have time. Yeah. Time is a leader's most precious commodity, yeah. right? And wasting a leader's time with banter at the mm. wrong time yeah, is, a big is, a, is, a, is, a, is a bad idea, yeah. right? Because they'll just get frustrated with you. And those kinds of insensitive, the, being yeah. insensitive, that can have a, a negative impact on your yeah. perception in the eyes of a leader as yeah. well as the world. What, do you agree with that? I Dad? do agree. I just think that you've got to keep trying though. The next day could be different. Yeah. You know, I can have been one mood on a one day just from something that's happened to me in traffic or whatever. It should be cancelled out quite quickly or the next day is better. Generally, my leaders, they forget and they bounce back a new person the next day. It That's why I think it might be important to go to the mediator, you know, to go yes. to a Debbie, the to, go, to go to the gatekeeper. I want to be that the negotiator. Person. I like the negotiator <laughs> and the mediator and the rebel Just DJ. Just to understand. The rebel yeah. DJ. Yeah. <laughs> so, Deb, I think this has been a really interesting conversation. Thank and you. I'd just like to ask you a final question, yes. which is, if there was one thing you could take out of this conversation for ACO as well as the broader industry, what would that be? Just not to forget and to remember that we're all human and we all have our hearts and it doesn't really matter what industry you're in. Whoever that your leader is is still a person, a human just like you, with a generally often a better heart than you think. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, that's, love, that's a lovely message. So Debbie, if there's anyone that's listening that would love to just get in contact with you, maybe there are people in the same position as you who would like to understand or discuss with someone a little bit about being that gatekeeper, that mediator, where would they be able to get hold of you? On email, Debbie, D-E-B-B-I-S, at aquaonline.com. Thanks, Debbie. And thank you for listening to the Brave Ideas podcast. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher or YouTube. And while you're there, give us a rating and a review. For more awesome content, please visit the Brave Ideas blog, which you can find at aquaonline.com forward slash Brave Ideas podcast. Also, if you'd like to get involved in the conversation, and please do, please follow us at Aqua Brave Ideas on Twitter or Brave Ideas podcast on Instagram. If you want to keep in touch with me, you can connect with me at El Hermo, E-L-H-E-R-M-O on Twitter and El Hermo23 on Snapchat and Instagram. And you can get in touch with Esther. You can email me at esther.mcgear at live.com. Special thank you to Debbie Skoltz, our guest. Thank you to Matthew Klevansky for music and production. Thanks to Johan Boiter and Eras Khos for the art direction. And thank you to our distribution team, Magesh Ramsamy, Kirsten Wiggle, Helen Semenis, Sisana Kumalo and Sabelo Kandile. That brings us to the end of the show. We'll leave you with one final thought. There are no original ideas, only original people. <laughs>